Olivia tells Spencer the truth about home not really feeling like home. Spencer is battling demons that are tied to his ego, it seems. And Jordan thinks that pressuring Layla within their relationship is gonna do just the trick. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another all American video. And in this one, we are breaking down season six, episode number two. If you're not new, welcome back, boo, because you know how we do. But if you are, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button. Turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my all-American content and conversations. I have a lot of all-American content on this channel. So if this is the first time that you are hearing my voice and or seeing my video, you have a treat in store for you. But let's go ahead and get into what I feel like was kind of chaotic, a little bit disorienting, and an episode that I really had to hang in there with because I was about to cut it off. First up, the top of the episode, the gang is hanging out at the beach house, the Malibu beach house that they shouldn't be in to begin with, but you know, they're making it work. And a huge part of the storyline, specifically, I think, I guess I would say the C story in this episode is Jamie, Asher, and their baby and them trying to find a place of their own, trying to find their footing and not relying too heavily on their community. And the first thing kind of sets the stage for us to go into this, but I'm not even paying attention to Jamie Asher and the baby who they're getting ready to put to bed once we open up in this episode. I'm paying attention to them talking about Jordan, who is basically a groomzilla, but not really like a groomzilla in the making because he's hyper-focused on this wedding, which is two, two years out. He wants venues, he wants swatches, he wants to pick wedding bands, he wants to nail down all the damn details and he's serious about it and Layla not really so much and you're probably like Erica well what's wrong with that you know sometimes people go through hyper fixation they might put a little extra energy a little bit of extra effort into something maybe because they're distracting themselves from something else because you know Jordan got a lot of sh that he dealing with internally so he could just be projecting you know projecting onto this wedding trying to make it all of his hopes and his dreams because he don't really have nothing to look forward to right now we're gonna come we're gonna get back to that what was off-putting to me is that in this moment where Layla was getting very much so uncomfortable with how Jordan was hyper fixating on their wedding and pointing out the fact that she is not showing up for the things that he would like her to show up for, she has a startled help me look, gives this non-verbal uh, communication across the room and then they immediately cut over to who? Spencer and Olivia. Spencer's holding Olivia, Olivia's looking off and Spencer is looking directly, what? Back at Layla. And I just really struggled with that, y'all. I talked about this a lot on the live and some of y'all were just like, no, Erica, you know, not too much. And you just seeing things, girl. I'm a stand on business. I don't think I was actually seeing things. And this is not me saying, oh, they're trying to make Spayla a thing or they're about to spin the block. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying though, is that I was very uncomfortable with Layla looking for comfort in Spencer when they haven't even given us the decency of them actually having a real conversation because while Spencer and Olivia did some shady sh to Layla I do think that their relationship was actually salvageable in a real way but unfortunately the series has really just kind of glossed over it and just left us to kind of assume that they're okay and back on friendly terms and for Layla to have this moment and to have her best friends quote-unquote Olivia across and to have Asher there right have Coop have patience there but to be looking for help and Spencer Spencer, and I get it because Spencer has a close relationship with Jordan or they're supposed to be bros or whatever. Maybe that's also part of it. It still just felt so wrong and so disingenuous because we have not actually seen Layla and Spencer interact to a place where we would actually believe, or at least I could actually believe that this would actually ring true. Like at this point, I think that Layla's going along to get along and she's not kicking up any dust and she wants Olivia to be happy and she is perfectly fine with this Bolivia relationship, cool, cool, cool. But I do not believe that there's not any thoughts in her mind in reference to how she was done by these people. So y'all not gonna have me believe that she's looking across the damn room and Spencer like, help me, help me please, because Jordan is tripping and Spencer's returning to, oh, I don't know what to do, I'm trying to help you, but nah they ain't that cool y'all not gonna get me to believe that they that cool without even giving us the character development to prove it and y'all i ain't even gonna hold you that part really got me very very early on so i missed so much and had to go back and rewatch. but it was just them kicking it as a crew as the vortex talking about how uh jordan is so close to the baby and he does the most for the baby and patience and coop like but he has aunties too and then we get to see because everybody's spending the night over at the um 
the beach house, we get to see how the baby crying affects everybody. And this is where we really start to get the kickoff of like Jamie starting to feel uncomfortable and realizing how disruptive their family and their new circumstance actually is amongst their community and friends within this household. Now, I'm going to stick with this and just talk about their storyline because by the end of the episode, I was way more bought in than I was at the top of the episode. And I appreciate Jamie specifically because she did not let Asher run in this episode and she's not allowing her her responsibilities and her relationship and any of the things that come with it to fall on her friends and and their community while they have benefited a lot from a ton of support and from everybody rallying around um them and the baby now she's starting to feel like I don't know if I can actually do this without people because we've always had people and I thought that that was a very real uh, conversation to have and I loved her wanting to step out there and not ask for help in certain moments just to see if they could do it and to help reinforce that this prompts Asher to really think about all that's happening all of the help that he's accepted I think it puts Asher in a really brilliant position to not be so much of a taker because historically his character has very much so been a taker and probably if Jamie didn't say anything he would have no problem with um allowing mrs baker to continue to babysit all willy-nilly allowing jordan to live vicariously in fatherhood by way of his baby and everything else that was happening however when jamie pointed it out now he wants to step up and he wants to actually be a leader not to say that he wasn't a leader before in the family but he really wants to speak to and address her her concerns ultimately y'all i don't know about how believable this is but ultimately they end up in crenshaw staying at coach baker's daddy's old house <laughs> <laughs> so that they can have their own house it's everybody running to the hood for me wasn't Spencer trying to get up out of there now you have Asher Adams the little white boy that was asking Spencer to crip walk the first time that he met him and his Asian woman and they mixed baby down in the hood okay well let's see how it plays out if uh the CW ain't gonna do anything else they're gonna give us something to talk about child again I don't know how much I believe this however for the purposes of their particular storyline and for Asher looking for something that he can do to have them stand on on their own two feet but then still be a part of their community and still be integrated in some way which I can't even say because nobody else is living in Crenshaw except for great Spencer just goes back to see his mama but he's all the way out in Malibu at this Malibu beach house so you go to you go to school out in Malibu and you are assistant coaching out in Malibu I don't know where Jamie's job is but I'm sure um, I'm, I'm assuming that it's the north of the 10 so we're gonna have to see how this whole decision plays out overall I'm excited for them taking the steps to be out on their own and it's not because I want them to have to struggle but I do want them to be able to cultivate some type of strength some type of um reliability within themselves and to not add additional pressure onto their college friends and roommate former roommate who are supposed to be living their best life and figuring out life for themselves ultimately jordan um layla olivia coop patience none of them should have to now be pseudo parents or proxy parents because y'all decided to lay down and come up with a babe no shade no tea now the b story i would say in this episode is definitely olivia in this goddamn book if she not gonna do nothing else she's going to write about the people closest to her in the most emotional and triggering way possible and always going to elicit a response and unfortunately it is typically going to initiate or elicit a negative response ma'am it's been a year you are trying to write your father's biography a year out a year out everybody hasn't even not that healing is a linear thing or it's ever just going to go away you're going to stop grieving but give it a little bit more time miss mamas you didn't already found a publisher you didn't already got a deal you didn't already sign it you already moved forward and you ain't asked nobody boo except for spencer who co-signed you because what he gonna co-sign whatever the hell you want to do because he know that you're going to do whatever the hell you want to do any damn way i understood a hundred percent why Jordan had smoke for Olivia and I think that he was 100% valid in doing it and y'all know I don't say that lightly because Jordan be tripping okay he is tripping for the most part all of the damn time except for now because Olivia does not tread lightly Olivia does not actually consider people's feelings enough and she really just bulldozes her way through life really disregarding the people that she supposedly cares about in order to go through whatever processing or healing or whatever the hell she thinks it is for herself that's the only thing that she's focused on and I think that this season is shaping up to be a very interesting one for the Olivia character specifically because in addition to us having moments like this where we're seeing her do more of the same and being selfish and making rash decisions and not being considerate we're also seeing her do things like move back from London when she don't actually want to and sacrificing her happiness and, and part of you know a dream in reference to how she's living life currently for love or for certain expectations that other people have of her so she does have certain things that are pulling her 
are to not be and do the things that she used to do in the same way and to have a, a deeper purpose and to think outside of herself and I think that we're going to see throughout this season her be in conflict with what she actually wants to do and the reckless abandon that she tends to have for just doing whatever she wants to do and actually taking her family and friends into consideration before she makes certain moves and I'm excited to see that specifically because I think that that's a very real conflict that people experience, especially when you're, you know, early 20s and coming of age, specifically in college and maybe even grad school. It's really hard navigating life and trying to figure out who you are, especially if who you are or who you are becoming is so very different than who people told you that you were supposed to be and who people expect you to be. But back to Jordan and, Le and Olivia, because they do have a little bit of conflict going back and forth when she initially tries to introduce this concept to him and then get him to help her break it to their mama and it's like um uh, ma'am i ain't say you're gonna do all that i just said okay it's something i could consider and you just bulldoze in the head um in addition to you know jordan having issue because it's so close and her moving forward and like having a deal and all of that without actually asking anybody first which again are valid points i also understand how he feels a way about her checking in with spencer without even checking in with her mom or him and this is a twofold thing because one he is actually Billy's son even though for all intents and purposes a lot of people act like Spencer is Billy's firstborn son or Billy's true son and I think that that's a thing that really weighs heavily on Jordan as a character and it could be a part of the thing that's continuing to fuel some of the animosity and the jealousy and the resentment that he feels about Spencer but then also just to think about Olivia as his twin sister feeling more comfortable to divulge this to Spencer over coming to him about it and he has missed her has wanted her here and excited for her to be back and now he has to grapple with certain feelings and jealousy and, and, and intense emotions and can't really fully express how he feels in the in the hopes of not necessarily alienating Olivia and basically chasing her ass back to London and that's basically what we're getting to when we get to see Layla like talk about well Olivia doesn't feel comfortable here she doesn't feel like this is home that's what Coop said and you need to take it easy on her I'm like Layla I'm not necessarily here for you and the jordala ness of it all all, but also this is your man not Olivia and you need to hear him out and you need to be on his side it's one thing to like make Olivia feel comfortable but it's also something to call her on her bush y'all are all getting older y'all should all start to realize patterns and behaviors especially when they're unhealthy within one another and be able to speak to that and this is the stuff that really helps unravel the idea that Olivia and Layla are best friends because the fact that I feel like they cannot actually speak truth to power to one another tells me that they're not actually friends like they want us to believe that they are because real friends can tell each other the damn truth and Olivia was dead ass wrong for moving forward securing a whole deal before actually confirming or even just running it by her mother and her brother and then running it by Spencer and including Spencer also without communicating with them it just added salt to the wound like Olivia you want to have a conversation with your mama and you want another second chance with Jordan to run the whole idea by them but you want to have Spencer there because Spencer was important too but also Spencer was not your daddy's son you could have told Spencer after the fact you could have looped Spencer after the fact after you got your mother your mother mother and your brother on board I think that for Olivia to be a character that the audience but also I think the writers try to hold in such high regard in reference to her communication and her emotional intelli intelligence she moves a little bit too reckless for me and that was shown in this actual episode there could have been a lot more intentionality in some of the decisions and how she set certain things up because they didn't have to go over the way they did even if she was feeling like she was caught between a rock and a hard place with this actual information ultimately Jordan decides that he's going to be okay with the book and Laura's going to go along to get along regardless because apparently none of the parents in the damn all-American universe are going to kick up any dust or put up any roadblocks or actually voice any concerns or make any of the kids press pause at any point between Laura like oh your dad's legacy I trust you with it. it don't matter what the hell you decide to do I just trust you and Grace over here and Crenshaw talking about Spencer it don't matter if your ass graduate just do whatever the hell you want to do baby I just mm. I can't. I'm not buying these damn parents anymore. At what point do we realize that these are, while they are growing young adults, they are still these people's children and they're still responsible for rearing said children. Like you still need to be an influence in these damn kids' lives. And all of the mistakes that we have seen them make, all of the rash decisions that we have seen them do, and y'all think that y'all gonna take y'all hands off the damn wheel now and let them go about doing whatever the hell they want like they got sense? Most of the time they don't have no damn sense. Grace, get your head together, get your sh together because Miss Mamas, you just talk about, yeah, you going 
going to declare for the draft it's all good and nothing is actually wrong with this it's a problem we are at the top of the season they didn't even get to compete uh in any real way last season and while he wants to declare for the draft cool but you do not need to announce that eight months out sir you don't need to announce that before your very first season game Spencer what the hell are you thinking and this is how we segue into the the, the a story of this whole thing Spencer is still getting a bunch of press coverage and coach Kenny don't want to close down practices because this is what's going to help put the, the the team back on the map and get people interested and drum up buzz cool 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 I get that even though I was very much so rooting for like y'all need to shut it down these damn reporters are rude they they start in mess they being divisive even though y'all got a snake in the grass by way of this goofy ass ass assistant coach offensive coordinator analyst whatever the hell he is snake in the grass putting bugs in Jordan's ear anyway if it was me I'll be shutting it down and we would be just taking our best shot when it comes to no media coverage but we coming out here to play and whoop ass okay but that's not the position that you want to take Kenny cool 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 Spencer you going back and forth and you so conflicted about people want to know how you going to play and what you going to do and are you going to declare for the draft and you think that by the end of the episode you actually declaring while all the other team has decided that they're going to do a couple of things and actually win the game because one team has figured out how to shut your ass down and the way that you call back all the attention on you is to go ahead and declare for the damn draft eight months in advance and your mama don't have no problem with it i have a problem with it that part is a distraction you try to play it like oh you announcing that you're going to be declaring for the draft is actually going to get rid of all the distractions and they can stop asking you for that so now you just have painted a damn target on your back so now they're not looking for how you're going to excel on a collegiate level now every single time that you step out on the field they're going to be measuring whether your ass can make it to the nfl how much your your speed measures up to to whatever wide receiver is is dominating in the NFL right now. However many yards you got is is measuring up against another wide receiver in the NFL. Your catches in the NFL, like everything now is about what you how this is going to look in the damn NFL. You just just jumped your ass out of boiling water and jumped into the damn frying pan, and you're supposed to be trying to set it up so that you can focus and y'all can have a winning season. And shout out to the subby who was going back and forth with me in the comment section because it's all love, baby, and this is all conversation. And if y'all want to check it out, go to the live uh, that we did last week and in the comment section they were pointing out like oh it doesn't matter if the team wins uh spencer is going to be seen by the recruiters and it's all about his raw talent i disagree i disagree 110 percent because it is so much bigger when it comes to drafting and this is so crazy that i'm recording this on the night that episode three actually premiered so i'm a little bit late but this is the night of the wnba draft angel reese did not go number one in the wnba draft specifically because it's not about raw talent caitlin clark did and i said what i said it's also about how you want to mesh with whatever program that you're coming into it's also about if they need a leader it's also about how much how many uh people that they need to be team players because they might already have a showboat on their damn team who don't actually understand the whole team dynamic it's about so much when it comes into going into the draft and spencer being a freshman and doing okay sophomore year we only have word because they skipped over the year we don't get to see it but apparently you excel statistically now you need to come and show not only can you put up numbers and can you put up stats as a player but how are you interacting with your team and no your team don't have to go ahead and win a championship for you to go ahead and get drafted but your team needs to perform in a way that makes you look good and the only way that happens is that they have to actually buy in and believe in you too they have to be down for the cause and not the cause of getting you to the draft but down for the cause of every day we put it out there and we leave everything out in that damn field and spencer i think is in a place or at least where we're seeing in the first two episodes especially in this one where we get to see him and his ego bag a little bit towards the end of the episode it's like you're going to alienate these teammates and if jordan decides to stop throwing to your ass and nobody actually has any qualms about it and y'all still winning some of these games then guess what some of these nfl dreams dry up because in this season that you're supposed to put everything that you can bring to the damn pro league on display you don't actually get to show because you're not even getting the ball you're not being looked to as a leader because nobody don't trust you ain't that what coach kenny said people questioning why you decided to make that decision while all of the the, the cameras was initially on everybody else you couldn't let nobody get no shine this is a problem a big problem and this is a a thing that's in spencer track record it has been since the beginning of the series he takes things and makes them worse he acts very impulsively he acts very immaturely he acts very emotionally and then he has to suffer the consequences for those things and while he is a character who is going to fess up and is going to stand in whatever comes from the decisions that he's making which i do applaud him for some of this sh he don't actually have to go through and this to me outside of actual talent also proves that your ass is not ready for the lead you can't even emotionally regulate at the first first game of y'all season the moment that the cameras are not facing onto you and you believe for a second because the second half of the game you ain't get no damn no, no damn throws you cannot even emotionally regulate and stay stable enough to not draw additional attention to yourself you are still so much in the survival and lack mindset that the moment that you think that things are not going the way that you need them to go or 
want them to go you are going to make a very rash decision and make it worse for yourself spencer's ass is not ready y'all and i'm gonna double down on what i said in the live for the first episode the premiere episode of like maybe he don't need to be declaring maybe he does not need to get drafted and he needs to make it to his senior year because there is developmental things that happen while you are in collegiate basketball play both on the field and in life that helps mature you and help grow you and it's supposed to prepare you you can be the best thing since sliced bread but how can you sustain it and i'm going to stand on wanting spencer to not only make it to the league but be able to have a fruitful and sustained career in the league and as it pertains to right now and what i'm seeing he won't make it and if he does make it his ass won't last and it has nothing to do with his raw talent everything to do with his maturity everything to do with his lack of focus you already getting all mixed up in the oblivionness of it all and is she gonna stay and is she gonna go and why is she telling people that she don't feel at home and oh my god sullen sunken spencer is back because olivia is running around doing whatever the hell she wants to do and i don't know what to do with myself ain't no nfl team playing for that ain't nobody cutting you a million dollars multiple million dollar checks to play each week for you to be worrying about what your girl doing in london or if your your girl is still your girl y'all spencer's not ready and i didn't even think i was going to go into all of that <laughs> but those are my thoughts um that came up since the live as well as in re-watching the episode now i am proud of jordan and being able to take matters into his own hands even though he's listening to the D be a snake in the grass because they he was the reason that they were able to pull that win out again like i mentioned earlier the team that they were playing actually clocked it and they clocked that spencer was getting the ball all the time and they at some point were able to stop him and this just shows that the team has other things to offer and this is uh the decisions that jordan made is something that's going to put him on other people's radar and show that he is more than just spencer's basic you know uh sidekick he's he's more than the man who throws to spencer james but he's the man who can make some plays happen he's the man who can think on his feet he's the man who was facing his fear of being under pressure and not too much because I still think he's doing this but this is clearly what the coach wants to work on with him as pointing this out and that he can handle certain things under pressure I'm going to need to see more because uh I feel like Jordan folds like lawn chairs after with pressure and he also noted that in the first episode he's like oh I'm jealous of Spencer but you know what I don't want that pressure at least you know yourself sir and we get to see you know his first interactions with the little snake in the grass ass coach and coach Kenny has to you know have a moment with the snake in the grass ass coach and I think that Kenny needs to stand a little bit firmer because I think that he's a little comfortable and that he's the head coach and he's been the head coach now for a year this is going to be his second year however this man was brought in for a reason and you should very much so feel threatened and you're not behaving like you feel threatened and not that I need you to lash out at this man but I need you to do a better job of commanding and also insulating yourself so that he cannot make a move that you don't actually know about and that your team knows to listen to you above all else now with that said he was actually right about utilizing Jordan in this damn game however his intention is all wrong so it's not we all wrong we all right you know come on throw back to season one of all american if you know you know um other than that y'all i think that's pretty much it uh ryan is going to help patients with her confidence and self-defense which i think is solid like a little solid little you know side 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 story um patient struggling with feeling comfortable and feeling safe like that's very real after all that she's been through and what she's currently going through with the potential of amiko getting out and i'm really enjoying seeing layla's um journey how she's handling this opening this new business but still managing patience and showing up for her and i'm a little bit curious about her reluctance to like jump in to all of this stuff that jordan has planned for their wedding like girl why are you dragging your feet y'all already have said that y'all are going to get married two years from now but you feel very apprehensive what's up with that now by the end of the episode she gives in and she helps decide what their wedding bands are going to be because it's one of the things that jordan had on his mind however throughout this episode at the top of this episode he's like oh you should move in with me i should move in with you and she's like you know what no i want to wait until i get married it's also giving you're not sure about him and that's very fair because at the end of the day i'm gonna stand on this especially right now because he haven't given us any other additional uh information and or evidence to prove otherwise layla is out of jordan's league and i'm gonna leave and and I'm gonna end the video there, y'all. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I will be caught back up and then posted in real time so these videos will not be late. I thank you so much for still watching. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are some real ones. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. And I cannot wait to see you on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the All American Live After Show happening right here on my channel. Go ahead and um, set the alert to let you know when the live actually starts and we get to chop it up about new episodes of all american again every tuesday it's your good sis you love to talk tv with and i'm gonna see you either on live or my next video bye